Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, today, we're going to run the Valley View local from Brighton down to Valley View. The way this train works is we, uh, like all, we first build it up here in the yard in Brighton. And so we're going to show some scenes here where we start assembling our train. We do have a very short train today. And here in just a minute, you will see the uh, switch list come up where you can see the uh, six cars we're picking up here in Brighton to head to Valley View and the cars we're going to pick up in Valley View for our return trip back to Brighton. This train is a, a fun one to operate. It travels all the way across the route from Brighton to Valley View. Uh, those are the two opposite ends of the layout. Valley View is also the location where the uh, interchange with the main line takes place since this is a branch line. Uh, but there's a separate train that completes that run. That train is the uh, relay, which I actually already have a video up for that one. There's a AM and a PM relay, uh, just because it's it's very important, honestly, to get the uh, traffic moving on the route. So uh, I have two relays, one in the morning and one in the evening, in order to just make sure cars get shuffled. All the cars for the Valley View Local are stored in track three of the Brighton Yard. Uh, they're also picked up from there, and we kind of do like a last in, first out, since it's a, a stub in yard. So, just to make it easy and efficient and quick, since we're not really the real thing, but rather just kind of a simulation, we only take the, the most recent cars that come in to the, uh, to the track. There are four industries in Valley View that are served by rail. Uh, most of the cars that are going to get shipped out, of course, are going to be box cars or reefers. But if we had a multiplayer session going on, uh, this would be uh, one of the jobs that the Brighton Yard crew would start putting together. Um, the Brighton Yard crew is a very, very busy job if we were going to have a, a multiplayer session. In one session, I think they have to build eight trains. Personally, for me, it'd be a lot of fun. So here we're kind of making our final preparations. We're pulling out our cut. These are our six cars. And we're going to go ahead and make our move to grab our caboose. On the branch line here, we don't really worry about making sure that the cupola is at the back or anything. We just grab the caboose and... Get ready to head out. We don't waste any time. In a typical operating session, this would be probably the third or fourth train out for the day. So it's it's not a train that you'd want to wait for. Uh, if I had an operator for this train, I probably would have him do some run through trains or something first while they wait. And now we're going to pull out our road power and uh, have some sound and enjoy the show. On the Brighton branch, if you've noticed in our videos, we don't actually use any locomotives with a wheelbase larger uh, than three coupled. So, you know, 460, 260. Honestly, this branch line doesn't have any need for any locomotives with more than six coupled. Uh, you could get away with running a consolidation. It's not like the radii is too tight or anything, but. Just not very heavy trains. The biggest train we get is probably 12 cars, and even then, that's not very common. In my opinion, that's uh, that's some of the best things about very old school, you know, early 20th century railroading is smaller trains, smaller locomotives, at least on branch lines. I know, obviously, there were some massive ones uh, that came out, you know, for the war and stuff, but this is uh, this is not that era. This is the town of Templeton. And here we are passing the co-op. Thank you all for watching the video on the co-op. That turned out to be a really popular video. I'm very grateful for that. Do have a policy, uh, I guess you say a rule actually, on this railroad. Whenever you approach a bridge, you give a bell and one short whistle.
This town's going to have a video coming up soon uh, where we run the local to this town. That's going to be a lot of fun. Busy, busy town. And just beyond this bridge to the right is the coal mine, and behind us there is the town we just left. There we go with that short horn for a bridge again. It's one of my favorite scenes on the railroad here. This is our the last part of our descent into the town of Valleview. So you'll have to excuse me for a Valley View. I still haven't finished the scenery <laughs> from the time I had shot this video. Uh, this part hadn't been finished yet. So it's like when you walk in those stores and they have the sign that says, uh, you know, please excuse the mess. We're remodeling. I guess you can say that's kind of what's going on here. So the way this works in Valley View, all the industries are facing against you when you first arrive. So typically the best process is to go ahead and get your run around and head over to the turntable. Uh, once there, you can go ahead and turn your locomotive. And then you go back to where the caboose is and you connect up and then you start working everything by pushing. You can really kind of work the industries whatever order you want, but I typically work them uh, the industry furthest away from town. Uh, and then I work my way back. So we're going to start with the uh, perishable shed back there on the left and then we'll work our way back to the team tracks up here in the foreground. If you were to keep going here right past the parable shed, you would end up in the uh, interchange yard, which was where our train went during the uh, the video on the AM relay. So to the right over there, you can just see it. So we're going to go ahead and put our three set outs in the back. And uh, by doing so, we're, we're grabbing all the uh, ones that were already there and we're kind of leaving them off to the side while we put our set outs in the back. And then since we're not actually picking any cars up from the parable shed, we'll go ahead and put those two reefers right back where we got them. Guess the uh, warehouse there is has been running a bit slow with uh, getting their cars unloaded. It's like the Port of Los Angeles 100 years ago. <laughs> Just not with containers. All right, and then uh, right up here, we have another industry we're going to serve real quick. Uh, we have a couple of pickups here. And as our usual process, uh, if there were any setouts, we would make sure to put those at the back first. Just too short there. <laughs> oh, looks like just one set out and two pickups. Not bad. Notice that we do have the pickups now in front of the caboose. That was actually done on purpose. That way we don't have to do any sorting of the train uh, when it's time to leave. It also helps kind of stay organized since we know that all of our setouts are behind the caboose. And here we're going to work the team tracks. There are two team tracks just because a lot of the uh, businesses here in town don't have rail side service. So therefore they're going to do business with the railroad via the team tracks. So you're going to see quite a bit of sorting here as we work through uh, the cars we're picking up and the cars that we're actually leaving behind. This is where, you know, railroading gets fun, at least model railroading gets fun, because uh, you ask five operators how to work this industry with these pickups and setouts, and you'll probably get five answers. Of course, you know, the way I chose to do it is clearly superior, but, you know, hey, everybody can have their opinions, right? <laughs> Honestly, I think I did an all right job of working this one, but, you know, there's always room for improvement, so I'm sure there's a, there's a way I could have done it that was better. Plus, I guess, you know, you got to consider how much you want to be like the prototype, too. If I really, really, really want to be like the prototype, I would have quite a bit of studying to do because I have no idea how they would, how someone on the prototype, you know, 90 years ago. Would have been 
but this is the last industry that we're going to work here in Valley View. So as soon as we drop off this last uh, box car, we're going to go ahead and uh, start heading back to Brighton. Gave two whistles that time. Guess we just felt like blowing the horn a little more than usual. <laughs> This one of my favorite shots here just shows most of the layout. You've got Brighton on the left, the uh, UP interchange yard in the center there, which we'll talk about in a later video, as well as uh, everything that you're seeing now. So quite a nice shot. But this town you see here, you get a full shot. It is so busy. There are actually two trains that serve this town. One that serves the log and aggregate industries and another one that serves all the consumer industries on the left. Want to come on those later, of course. And now we're working our way back by the co-op on the way back to Brighton. If you made it this far, just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, being a part of the, of the views and hanging out on the channel. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it really helps a lot and I obviously super appreciate it. it helps get the content out to more people who might be interested. So thanks again for joining and... Last couple things we're going to do here in Brighton, we're going to go ahead and park our train and pull off the head and power and, and go put it on the ready track. And uh, we'll probably actually go turn it on the turntable on the next video because we're going to be taking the same locomotive out for our next train. Well, thanks again, guys. Take care. Appreciate it. And stay tuned for more videos, and we'll see you guys soon.